I'll tell you sometimes people had to accept that uh, proposal of harassment because they had to kind of survive in the company. Otherwise you kicked out. Yes. You'll be fired. I yes. mean it was very in, in simple very at nice that point way, of time. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. If somebody is from a privileged background, I have seen, I have noticed somebody, your approach towards that person is totally different and your approach towards somebody else is different. And I wanted to bring the um, uniform approach to everybody irrespective of what background they come from okay like be optimistic and sometimes if you fail it is good it could be for a reason you might fail because you you have to learn something different it's not because your efforts were wrong you have something more to do hi everyone welcome to inspiring the future today we have with us someone who speaks six languages born and brought up in bangalore and has been in the hr for about 17 years and plus now. So I'm going to hand it over to Divya Raj Gunashekar today and let her give her introduction herself. All right. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hi. Thank you uh, so much for um, having this comfort zone for me and uh, calling me for this show. And uh, my name is Divya and uh, born and brought up in Bangalore. Yes, uh, I'm uh, comfortable with six languages, but you know, jack of all, master of none. Okay, because uh, <laughs> it's kind of uh, corrupted, uh, uh, you know, languages sometimes because Kannada mixing with your Tamil uh, and Tamil mixing with other languages. So that's what it is. And um, I am uh, I am somebody with uh, 15 plus of uh, years of experience into HR and uh, I am a mom of two kids and I spend uh, available time with my family and uh, uh, hobby wise I don't have much to tell because my most of the time is taken away by my family people and uh, I am a little uh, interested person into gardening and things like that. Uh, yes, a quick intro about me. Perfect, amazing yeah. and I think uh, this is not the only thing, there's a lot, a lot more to learn about Divya today so let's get into it and uh, talk about your journey so far um, if we speak about you know your journey to becoming what you are today not just professionally I would say even personally uh, if you were to talk about three events that kind of shape the person that you are today what would they be so first thing is my childhood days okay uh, there was a lot of ups and downs during my childhood days, which has really given me a lot of uh, lessons learned. And uh, it was um, uh, one thing, I'll talk about it. Uh, and the second thing is, again, my early career stage. Okay, I again had a lot of ups and downs, which uh, gave me a lot of lessons learned in the uh, profession, professional side of it, career side of it. And um, the third thing is my uh, motherhood, again. Uh, so a lot of things I learned, and um, that is again given a better shape to what I am today. So to go in detail, uh, childhood days, so we are uh, four siblings and uh, we were all in our comfort zones. And at some point we had to take a, uh, we were forced to take a deviation from what the comfort zone that we had. And uh, it became a little tough to uh, pursue with uh, a good educational lifestyle, good uh, society uh, that we had to kind of uh, uh, overcome. And uh, I, I lost my uh, father in the early stage uh, and that became a challenging one to uh, my mom and uh, for me to run the family so that that was the initial stage where we thought that something is not right and uh, I had completed my uh, uh, second PUC okay and at least I was there and my other younger ones were still in the educational side of it where they still had not stepped out of that fundamental educational uh, background right so that's when I kind of uh, had to help my mom who was never out from our um, uh, homemaker life right then I had to choose something and I stepped out and uh, that was my time to uh, grab an offer. I had my several interviews for a very small position at those days when I was 17 and uh, somewhere I was like uh, offered something and they said okay you're all good but we can't offer you because you're not yet 18. I was like yes it becomes a child uh, labor like you know. So that was the time I had to again uh, push back and uh, uh, see what the tough times that I had and uh, somehow I got into the uh, career life of it and uh, uh, then uh, five years it was very tough for me to kind of cope up with the career world because a um, lot of struggles because more than the success stories that I have seen a lot of struggles is something that I want to highlight where I, I had a chance to overcome I had strength to overcome that uh, sometimes it could be your harassment in workplace sometimes it could be the uh, dominating uh, um, uh, days that you had to overcome and sometimes some um, 
uh, senior people treating you in a disrespectful way because of because you are in that junior position so these are the things that uh, was running in my mind and i thought why why like this because whatever the position that you are in a company every position has its own essence its own need its own value right why people are not treating you in the same way that they treat somebody else who are in a bigger position so that thing came into my mind and uh, with the lessons by then i had learned a lot in my childhood and then these things and all uh, somewhere grounded me that uh, i have to be uh, in a leadership position in future and that should be in hr okay where i am in that position where i treat everybody unique and neutral Equally. so that that grounded and i never knew that the dream come dream will come true like today i am and uh, then parenting uh, after 10 10 years of my uh, professional career that i achieved then parenting also taught me i was very kind of uh, quick in reacting to something and my patience was uh, very yeah. less okay <laughs> and yes yeah, so as a mom i learned uh, okay yeah. you have to have more polite calm way of approach it it can it, work both ways that parenting yes, aspect and yes. they can really touch that last nerve of yours also, also and they can teach you the patience that you've never thought you will have thought you will have <laughs> so. yes and uh, planning because Because uh, when when you are just uh, alone or when you are with your partner, many things can just go even if you have not planned. Yeah. But when you start that parenting uh, and things like that, you have to plan everything. You can't just take your kids out and say, okay, we are we are come out for an outing. Mm. You have to make sure you pack the belongings yeah. that you need mandatorily. Yeah. Yeah. So these three things, uh, in short, I would say my childhood and uh, the the early career life of mine and the parenting has given me a lot of uh, learnings which has shaped my life. to what i am today amazing i think that's uh, that's great i'm i'm let i want to talk a little bit more about uh, you know where you spoke about initially the struggles that you had in in the career and for which reason i mean you've become uh, what you are today the hr uh, the position that you are and like we spoke earlier also uh, bringing the change about in the perspective of being an hr Uh, and what hr stands for i think you worked for last uh, 15 plus years to kind of bring that change in so um has it been an easy task to bring that change in about because the kind of people that you would be dealing with i would um for example uh, the talents that you would be acquiring for a certain company and um the employers who you would be dealing with it's 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 a like gap that you need to bridge between both of them right yeah so how was that journey for you how is that uh, bridging that gap aspect for you well so uh, it was not easy yeah. okay to one word answer it was not yeah. easy so to connect again see um, my early career there were a lot of times that um, the discrimination happened mm-hmm. right and uh, also uh, if somebody is from a privileged background i have seen i have noticed somebody your approach towards that person is totally different and your approach towards somebody else is different and i wanted to bring the um uniform approach to everybody irrespective of what background they come from okay and i thought it is important because many companies do appreciate and many companies have that system but where i have been in the past somewhere i found that people's approach towards different different people were different that's when i thought that you need to bring that uniformity right mm. and uh, I, in my early career also we we had um, some issues i have faced a lot of issues where harassment was one of your one of the thing that um, i was not able to voice it out okay yeah. we did not have that pl- uh, pl- platform today we have posh committee today yeah. we have lot of emphasis uh, that we put for the posh and we we train people about how do you take care what what are the proactive things that you need to address and all yeah. but at my uh, mm, career uh, stage we did not have too much of importance given to posh yeah. so we had to i think it wasn't even in existence at not that point of existence, time not even existence yes and yes. Um, it, i mean it was not something to be addressed, addressed. also it was yeah, it, it was, was not a norm it was not a standard policy no. that some companies used to follow no. right? so those were the uh, times uh, uh, and uh, i was i was having that courage and strength to overcome that but i have also witnessed many of my colleagues or many of my my friends who had to kind of admit that because of various reasons so uh, not in uh, detail but i'll tell you sometimes people had to accept that uh, proposal of harassment because they had to kind of survive in the company otherwise you kicked out 
yes you'll be fired i mean yes. it was in, very in simple very at nice that point way, of time exactly yeah, yeah and also i have witnessed uh, some of the individuals who had to kind of admit it if not your promotions and things though you have your potential they had to somewhere open the doors of acceptance but yeah. i do, i do, i i don't tell that that was a right way mm-hmm. definitely because uh, they 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 had a uh, lot of opportunities that they could have said no in a different form so yeah. you you had to say no but again um, there there are people who have seen uh, growth because of good reason bad reason but uh, collectively for me what i thought is i have seen an audience who have kind of adjusted to the environment i have seen audience who have not got adjusted but still shined out and i belong to that where i had i had to face the people and tell them okay we 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 kind of have to emphasize on your potentials and some major people have uh, come out of it and they're shining well in the potentials okay so hr when i talk about um okay when when we talk about different generation and generation gaps i definitely have seen a lot of uh, changes that has advanced as your technology is evolving even the individual mind is also yeah. evolving people chose to be on a comfort zone and uh, uh, be it my my life that i started or any other individuals and my interviewing uh, 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 life that i have seen people used to come and uh, uh, look for the opportunity where they think that okay i have started something as a step and you have a long uh, go that you have to achieve mm-hmm. that that was there and people were ready to accept the challenge where it is um, thinking out of the box and proving your potential right. that was the mindset but now the mindset is totally kind of uh, shift to to a comfort zone yeah. where people want everything now i have, now sometimes i have started to sell that you have your coffee tea you have your pantry set up you have your friday for <laughs> activities what you're selling. yeah we are selling the opportunity the opportunity is somewhere behind the scene and we have to sell the opportunity with the competitive world is evolved yeah. i understand but this generations have kind of asking what's my work from home a uh, number of work yeah. that i can get yeah. what's the capacity that i can get what's the rewards and recognition models that and that's have. why i spoke about that bridge aspect right because the employers are still not willing to open that gate uh, many of them are not ready to open that gate of uh, working from home or remote working and uh, you know giving that flexible hours and things like that is not it's still not a concept with the employers As a whereas yeah, yeah. and yeah, whereas yeah. Uh, your uh, you know the people who want to be hired are very clear about how they want the uh, they environment want to, be. to be i think i think change is constant and employers need to understand and uh, draw a, a concrete plan where they can accommodate few things i'm not telling we have to accommodate everything at least in my past 10 years i've made sure that the life at uh, office is going to be a, a difference that i can sell about because yeah. anybody can give you an opportunity anybody can give you a role and tell this is the ctc all that i'm trying to do is uh, how hrs can make sure that your growth the transparent communication the uh, the um, future dreams that you have how you can envision your future so these are the things that i'm trying to kind of in my daily go talking to the leaders and uh, building your policies and everything i make sure that there's a touch that talks about the transparency the culture yeah. the uh, the the voice out that you can do when you're enough talented and all so many things comes into my agenda as an hr and that's what i train my core hr team that okay So if, if you speak to the leaders directly yeah. and if you were to you know ask them three major things that they are supposed to f- um, have in a work environment today to kind of make it easier for you to hire um, a good candidate what what would you tell them and what would those three things be uh open door policy okay many company talk about it but we don't uh, executed we don't show it in actions mm. okay open door policy the transparency mm. and the uh, and the growth uh, visibility okay we should have a career ladder planned already to somebody who's coming and telling okay if you walk your first step this this is going to be your destiny so you need to have a career ladder and follow uh, and follow that and the third one would be the culture the culture uh, many people talk about what is your culture what are your core values and uh, sometimes we start with a josh and somewhere we don't follow it because of various reasons we mm-hmm. should have a consistency to follow the culture telling that what is our culture we need wow. to always be an ambassador to run that culture wow so, that's uh, very true i mean all three i think are very major for anyone to sustain in in an environment and have a healthy working environment i yes, think yes yes amazing so coming back to you a little bit more let's talk about you and uh, continue on to your journey that we spoke about 
um, the three amazing events that you spoke. I'm sure there's so many more. But so far, if you were to put it in a book and name it, what would it be? I would call it as adventurous HR journey because why I always want to emphasize this HR is again um, you are a game changer for many individuals and if you do it right I think um, you just have a job satisfaction that you were able to show the real world to individuals who were able to grab, grab the right treasure. Mm -hmm. So I would call it as an adventurous HR journey. Yeah. So that's very true. Um, you know, we also spoke about earlier when we were talking, I think we talked about how so many people that you've come across in your life and uh, so many that you, you know, you've inspired and they've come back and, and been uh, so grateful for the, for the you know, kind of mentoring that you've done for them. Just like that, do you have your inspiration as well? Somebody that you look up to? I've got uh, my inspiration, my energy from different, different individuals. But uh, in my early career, I had few people who my leaders uh, who always did uh, their job out of the box. They just did not mm. focus on something that they, okay, this is my job to you, you do it. They kind of went a little extra mile to tell me, this is why you have to do, this is why you have to think. So they made me think, they made me do different things. To give you one answer, my mom, okay. Uh, that is a common answer maybe you might have heard but uh, my mom is an individual who had um, stepped into a parenting life in a very early age yeah. and by 23 24 she was already a mom of four kids she was uh, she was somebody who kind of took the struggles in a positive way and she fought the society yeah. uh, different struggles uh, when 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 you're at 32 33 when you have lost a partner you know how the society would have uh, uh, looked up to you uh, she was an inspiration for us even today and, uh, and you have four daughters. We I mean, have four right? daughters yeah. and we never went to any tuitions. Yeah. She was our teacher in home and uh, she taught us everything. Wow. She learned Hindi. She she never had an opportunity to learn Hindi. In her, in, she was she was from Mandya, Mysore, the uh, other um, part of Karnataka. So she, went, she never knew Hindi, right? So when we had Hindi in our academic, she learned it along with us. Okay, and she used to teach us and she learned it along with us and Max or Beat Science or Social. So she was our guru and... Uh, even in our uh, college days also, she she was the one who used to help us learn. So my mom is my biggest inf uh, inspiration. And after that, there are several individuals in my life who have uh, inspired me in different, different actions, uh, different uh, stories that they talk about their real life and all. Beautiful. So there are a huge uh, people. Uh, beautiful. I think yeah. that's uh, really, really beautiful because uh, like you said, and I'm really sorry about your father as well, it's it's it would have been a struggle for her as well to kind of raise four daughters, daughters. especially um, at the time that it was not anymore. Yeah. But you know that whole concept of only oh it's a ladki hai and all that is going to be such a big deal, right? Yes. It always has yes. been. So right. coming back to your X Y Z fact, if you were to talk about one thing like a superpower that uh, you know people who know you rely on you for, what would that be? Uh, my superpower is. Um, Believe in yourself and be vocal about uh, what you want in a nice way. Be more empathetic and be positive. So optimistic approach for anything is the superpower because I always believe and I always tell people, it'll happen, don't worry, work for it. Okay, put your efforts, it'll happen. They, many a times people come, oh, it's not happening, yaar. I don't think it'll happen. So I always throw them that uh, one thought in their mind, believe in your efforts. And, uh, and also effort should be something smart and right. You cannot uh, uh, run towards the west and try to get a destination of your east, right? Believe in your efforts, be optimistic, and uh, be vocal and be more empathetic, and uh, respect yourself and respect your uh, um, audience or others in your world. Things will fall in place. Things will definitely fall in place. So coming to why factor, of course, I mean, I want to um, address the X as well while I uh, question you with the why. So what is the reason for, you know, you being so motivational, so positive and the outlook, of course, uh, of, of course, being in an HR, I think that's a very major characteristic that you need to hold. But uh, what keeps you going and doing what you do? Um, uh, the success stories of my own projects that I pick. A, the more I am positive, the more I have my confidence toward myself and what I am doing. As always, uh, I have always seen the results. The result is always a positive side. So that's why I tell people that uh, this is why you have to, everything that you do when you know the results have come, when you know the win-win is happening, continue doing that. 
like be optimistic and sometimes if you fail it is good it could be for a reason you might fail because you you have to learn something different it's not because your efforts were wrong you have something more to do so with this uh, small win wins that you have seen in the past and that drives me that yes all my past has given me the good result maybe some would have taken some extra time some might have taken some extra efforts and i might have uh, uh, put down myself okay it's not happening i might have had my bad days but when i see back that that uh, the juice that i had when i started something be it your job with your small day to day life whatever and i see the result that has happened the way you envisioned that drives me that okay continue doing that continue doing that and your z factor so you talked about the bad days so i want to you know touch base on that so when the do, bad days do happen so how do you pick yourself up and bad days do happen give it time time will heal everything give it some time and uh, do not uh, go to an extreme that uh, this is the end so what do you usually do to pick yourself up uh, i go and vent it out because if i keep it in my mind it uh, has its uh, 2x 3x of multiplication that will happen so i find my right uh, companion be it my peer be it my uh, friend or anybody that i could trust and rely upon and uh, i go and kind of vomit everything like it is happened this <laughs> happened i kind of went out everything so that i feel light and uh, it doesn't go- goes into my subconscious mind they also kind of sometimes give a solution if they have or they make fun not of it if they have to so that they i kind of chill out and then um, i'll wait for the right time and my next day will become a miraculous one where some magic would have happened my problems would have gone because i gave that time so the bad days you have to wait for it learn if you have if you, you have to gen, you have to be genuine to yourself don't show your attitude don't put your ego any in front of anybody talk to yourself that you really have to learn something learn it and uh, don't keep it to yourself because end of the day you are not a robo you are a human right it it could multiply in your mind talk to somebody put it out put it out great yeah. Yeah. So I want to come back to your HR experience is something that I I think something that's running in my head and I've been wanting to ask you as well. So there is a perception about HRs uh from an earlier time to till now right there is there is a certain way that we look at HR as an aspect but of course HR now has become a vast um, uh thing it's not just uh, uh you know acquiring a talent and making sure you give out the the, the paychecks and all that right it is there's so much more to it of course but still the perception towards an hr is something that is uh, it's always been a certain way uh, um, and it all i think that will carry forward so what are the three things that you really want to change um about the perception that uh, somebody holds about an hr right so yes um to majority of the world corporate world hr is somebody who runs your payroll uh, deducts deducts the tax <laughs> and uh, gives you an offer letter that this is your appointment letter and you have issues you just go and file a complaint so this is what the hr is to the world but uh, i think uh, there is something beyond that that uh, hr could uh, serve the corporate world in terms of your psychology understanding the people people's world connecting the bridge between uh, uh, different colors of people and uh, training and mentoring them so we uh, uh, hr these days are actually doing that they do a lot of mindfulness sessions they coach people they do a strategic approach towards the business understanding the past and they kind of predict the future and connect the dots it is everywhere you have your footprint into the business and you try to connect by giving them uh, mentorship opportunity uh, giving them the platform of of um, connecting with your different uh, leaders a lot of things uh, these days uh, hr is doing so if i have to tell um, i have already kind of started to do that training people and uh, giving them uh, giving them the um, visibility of your future mm-hmm. and um, kind of not pampering them too much with uh, the automation world that you have still g- trying to give them some kind of an exercise there where they kind of kind of think and do something more so um these days hr has become a strategic partner to the business right i can say we we wanted to at least um, i can see lot of people have have their footprints in different verticals of the business mm-hmm. where they kind of connect the dots for the business uh, with the human touch like human touch can never be replaced by any ai, AI right so uh, no ai can replace that so human touch in various forms is still needed where we try to bridge that gap amazing excellent yeah. so yeah. great i think we're very close to the end of our show of course i think i there's so much more but uh, we'll have to kind of 
close it here. But before we let you go, there's always one thing that I ask my guests, which is to give a growth hack to our listeners and viewers who can take this away and kind of make their dreams into reality. Yeah, the hack, the growth hack is um, continue to dream, right? But that dream, you need to put efforts and that efforts need to be a smart effort, right? Um, these generation, uh, the generation that I'm seeing today, they want everything to ha happen in a hybrid way, a very shortcut way, like. Right? And what is happening is you stop functioning in a creative way. Uh, you, your brains are adapted to that technology way. Everything happens, okay? You find something on Google, you have a shortcut to something, you just go there. And you don't allow your brain to think uh, and uh, have a roadmap. So um, con uh, dream about your goal and um, work it out, have a blueprint in your mind. Consistency in your uh, goal should be there. And uh, learn out of your mistakes, do not give up. Because many a times when you can't uh, achieve something, you just take a step back and it, you, you wanted to dream something different, yeah. okay? You don't achieve something, okay, this is not my cup of tea, let me walk out towards. No, there is, a, there is a way that you have to figure out. So have a consistency in your efforts and approach and continue to dream and allow your brain to have the creativity just not by grabbing some shortcuts, okay? I think that's your growth hack. Amazing. And uh, just like I think you're an example to all of them. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you for thank being you. at Inspiring the Future podcast. Thank you. It's a pleasure having you. Thank you. Thank you for giving me this opportunity.